I supply a sample input and the wave function collapse algorithm can automatically create larger outputs with infinite variations that follow the same general style as the original input. I'm using it here to create procedural terrain for a game world using tile maps. Every time I refresh this world, it is going to generate an entirely new terrain of any size I like based on the example input I supplied. But it can also be used more generally for images, 3D worlds, or really anything where we could derive some kind of adjacency rules based on a sample input. This looks like something that belongs in the realm of machine learning, but it's not, at least not in the typical sense. It's actually a relatively simple algorithm, especially the tile-based version that I've implemented. It has been around since 2016 and variations of the algorithm have been used to far more impressive effect than my purposes, like Townscaper by Oscar Stahlberg for example. All implementations of the wave function collapse algorithm use these same basic principles, but we are going to focus on the simpler tiled model outlined by Robert Heaton. This will allow us to generate outputs based on which tiles are allowed to be placed north, south, east or west of other tiles based on constraints we generate from the example input. The implementation I wrote for my game is a reasonably faithful adaptation of Robert's work from Python to TypeScript. I'll have a link to both in the description, just don't count on my TypeScript example being an exact conversion. I've also added some support for tile rotations and equivalences which may or may not even be working properly. The basic idea is this, you start with an empty grid of cells. Now we can imagine that each cell in the grid could contain any tile that exists in our example input. This is the main connection to the wave function collapse name from quantum physics. We could say that each cell in this grid is initially in a superposition of all possible states for that cell. We then collapse those cells into a single definite value. That's about the end of the connection to quantum physics. Uh, I think it's a fun name, but it seems to be a point of annoyance for people. So we start by picking one of these cells at random and collapse it by randomly picking one of the possible tiles for that cell. This choice is weighted by how frequently a particular tile appears in the example input. Now that we have a definite value for this particular cell, it might constrain what values the tiles to the north, south, east and west of it can be. From our example input, we will have analysed every tile and generated rules that constrain which tiles can be placed next to each other. For example, we know that a full dirt block can be south of a top edge dirt block. It can also be north of a bottom edge dirt block, but it can never be directly next to a full grass block. If an adjacency does not occur in our input example, it cannot occur in our output example. So we propagate the effect of our initial selection, which reduces the tile possibilities of particular cells throughout the grid. Now we start the cycle again, but this time there is an important difference. Instead of just randomly picking the next cell to collapse into a definite value, we are going to pick the one with the lowest entropy. This is also affected by how frequently the tiles appear in the example input, so for a better understanding of exactly how this is calculated, you can look at how Shannon entropy is used in the source code. But the basic idea is that we want our next choice to be the tile with the fewest possible options. In this case, the lowest entropy tiles are going to be those next to our dirt block, as their possibilities have been restricted to just edge blocks or another dirt block. We collapse one of those into a single definite value, again random but weighted by the tile's frequency, and we again propagate those changes according to the constraints. We keep doing this until we have definite values for all of the cells in the grid. Unfortunately, we can run into a disaster scenario here. It is possible to get into a situation where there are no possible tiles allowed for a particular cell in the grid based on the constraints. The most common approach here is to just restart the generation, but you can also potentially backtrack or have some special rules around what tiles should be assigned to those spaces. So that gives us our tile map, and if I change the input example, I can get vastly different results. Our example we have used will result in pretty boring blocky patches of dirt, but I could provide a more chaotic input example and get a much more natural looking result. Or I could provide a more complex but still orderly example resulting in something that looks a little more like town roads. Another cool example, the one that Robert used, is to generate a coastline. In this example, ocean can be next to sand and sand can be next to land, but the sea can never directly touch the land. If you want to have a play with this yourself, I'll have links to everything in the description. And if you found this video interesting, a like or subscribe before you go would be very much appreciated. And I hope to see you here again next week.